Bird. To the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commission packet up here. Yeah. Right, so I need to get my commission packet up. There we are. Okay. Uh, any public comments? Nope. Uh, you're doing an approval of minutes. Do so I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I shall move, Mr. Chairman. And I will second. All in favor, signal by by saying aye. 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 Commission comments it and committee reports. I have none, Mr. Chairman. I don't either. Um, I don't either. Um, reports of elected officials, department heads. I don't see anybody. Uh, new business before the board. So we have uh, Justin, your own. You want to introduce somebody? Sure. This is uh, Sarah Steele with Gilmore and Bell. Uh, she's kind enough to drive up from Wichita. Uh, this is an important uh, consideration, and uh, I'd be fibbing a bit if I said that I understood uh, entirely how this transaction works. Uh, so it was important to me that she be here and be able to answer some of the. It was important to me that she be present and answer any uh, technical or uh, legal questions you might have relating to this. Uh, transaction. Uh, so that's why Sarah's here. Uh, as a, I guess, a reminder or for anybody who's listening, this is a request for an industrial revenue bond issue uh, for the project uh, uh, that we're pursuing at 325 Commercial Street, which is a 17-unit uh, apartment re adaptive reuse free development project uh, of the old YMCA. Uh, based on the numbers that I've got, uh, this uh, transaction is very important uh, to making that uh, project feasible. Uh, it's a, essentially, we're pursuing this as a sales to, to garner a sales tax exemption on construction materials uh, and labor, um, which uh, for this project is north of a seventy-five thousand uh, dollar item. Um, it's a roughly three million dollar project, uh, so that's a significant percentage uh, towards getting that to, to solvency. So. Um, Sarah, do you have anything to add about how that transaction works or what it looks like? Well, if yes, if you'll bear with my voice, sure. I just wanted to reiterate that our firm, Gilmore and Bell, has represented the county for a long time as bond counsel, and industrial revenue bonds may be used to help projects, private projects like this, um, in obtaining a sales tax exemption. City of Atchison has done this recently on a couple of projects, and it it helps on the front end with um, cash flow and construction, and um, so you can get a sales tax exemption that is across the board. So it includes the six and a half percent of the state, as well as local sales tax on all the construction materials and labor. Um, we won't belabor it. Industrial revenue bonds are also used to give a property tax exemption. That's not an issue here. Um, I do understand it's in the neighborhood revitalization area, so um, that the project is not applying for any sort of additional benefit other than strictly a sales tax exemption on materials and labor going into construction. The um, initial procedure that the county would need to take if they approve this is to adopt a resolution and there is a form of resolution that we have before you today simply expressing your intent to issue bonds. This is an initial intent. We then can take this resolution to the Department of Revenue, assist the project in getting their sales tax exemption certificate 
they would use that all the way through construction. At the end of construction, when they know what they've spent, will come back to you and actually it issue bonds. So the final issuance of the bonds will be at a later time. The um, I'm not sure what your construction schedule is. Probably next year. Well, well the aim is to start demolition even yet this month with initial demolition. Uh, we would aim to finish uh, the construction contract, uh, which is still in draft form. I uh, would be through the end of June next year. Mm -hmm. So they would have 12 months to, to build it. So the plan would be then we'd return to the county commission at the end of, of construction of the project and ask for the issuance of bonds. These are in no way an obligation of the county. They don't count as debt toward uh, your debt limit or any other um, debt of the county. And it's purely an accommodation under state law to allow the project to get the sales tax exemption. So there's no liability or no. anything to the county? Correct. All of their, sir, all of Gilmore Mill services are paid for by the, by the company, by the developer. The developer gets the benefit, so, so they would pay those fees as well. Any questions? Are you going to try to promote local, local uh, contractors? contractors. It'll, it'll be a, the general contractor will be local and um, the sizable. The sizable portion of the, the subcontractors, including all the mechanical uh, and tradesmen, will be local. Uh, I'm not ready to announce that deal no. just yet, but um, you, know, you have my, my absolute word that the, the general and six of the largest subcontractors will be local. When I, when I say local, I mean Atchison County. They're not all within the city limits, but they're Atchison County. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I don't know that it's a question so much as a comment. I, um, procedurally, I, there's also a step where the city commission is notified and they uh, uh, have to approve it. Um, yeah, I, I can, and I wouldn't anticipate that would be a problem, but that's, uh, that's no, something that will happen. Won't. So usually... That's, um, thank you, Pat. Um, because it's located in the city and the county is the issuer, they do have to approve this it's and a, we've it's got a consent the thing documents. as opposed to a, as opposed to them being the sponsor. So I've had that mm -hmm. conversation with uh, with Becky and she's okay with it. They had a heavy preference that um, that the county be the sponsor of this given my day job, right? Um, wanted this to be as separated as possible. Uh, so the county would be the, the sponsor of this, be the issuer of the bonds. But the city does have to I think it's called a consent resolution or something. Yes, and have we have drafted those documents so yeah. There's a notice that we'll need Michelle to sign um, and send over to the city, and then we'll go through that procedure as well. I would expect them to consider that. If, if we uh, things go as planned today, I would expect them to consider that at their meeting on the 17th of June. Um, I will not be present at that. I'll be out of town on vacation, which actually works out really well. Um, so they can, they can handle it however they, uh, however they need to. The question is, there, how big of a um, boon is this for, I mean, how is it really affecting, as much as you probably want to say here, but I mean, uh, you'll, if you get this versus if you didn't have it? I mean, what, it's what all does it affect? I mean, like, bottom line, big so, time. Bottom line, big time, because uh, Kansas has a, what they, they call it a remodel tax. Uh, so any commercial structure that is remodeled, is subject to the, not just the materials, but the labor is subject to sales tax. So, so we'll say for the sake of conversation that we're at, um, we, we'll do it this way. Say that um, construction was a million dollars. It's more than that, but we'll say that it's a million dollars. Uh, and that includes materials, labor, everything. The sales tax that you would owe would be $87,500. On a, on a million dollar project because it's not just materials. So the amount of sales tax on I mean, this, this is a, a couple of multitudes of a million dollars. And so uh, the total amount of sales tax that would be due uh, without this exemption is is uh, six figures, uh, maybe twice over. Uh, it's extremely significant to to be to making it solvable. 
Any other questions? Uh, the chair would entertain a motion to adopt the resolution number 2019. 1451. 1451. A resolution of the governing body of the Atchison County, Kansas, determine the advisability of issuing taxable industrial revenue bonds for the purpose of financing the acquisition, construction, renovation, equipping of a commercial facility located in our in said county and authorizing the execution of the related documents. I have a motion. Also moved. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. It's moved and seconded. Uh, do we have any further discussion? Hearing that, I should be ready to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, passes three to zero. I need two copies of that, and I only have one. Yeah. I have five copies. I've got one. Same so maybe. Got probably I've got one. We need one. one. We need more than two. I can deal with a digital copy that will show up and send me later, so I, I don't need a paper one. And if if you wouldn't mind, I've got. Um, well, obviously, type that in. Who is that? I got. I got a question. Sure 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 three, actually. I have this PC. Okay. Okay. I just have one thing I'd, I'd like to say is yeah. uh, uh, you've been Good to work with. You've kept us well informed. Uh, I think it's a good project. But uh, you know, I just kind of like to point out that you know, I think sometimes the county don't get credit for working with some of the projects that go or ongoing in the city. And I think this is uh, something that uh, I'm glad to do. But sometimes it has to be pointed out. Yeah. Understood. I guess we're giving thanks specifically to the city of Atchison. About a million dollars last year for projects and for um, different organizations. I don't foresee it, but if we were had some questions to ask, we'd probably ask you to come up and answer it. Anytime. Okay. I don't that's foresee the, it. That's the responsibility that comes with doing this kind of uh, right. business in the public realm. Sure. No problem at all. Thank you very much for the partnership and. It's not lost on me at all. There'll be a, a, I think in the next three weeks, there'll be a press release that announces the contractor and, and some of those things. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make the, the property appropriate uh, credits in that press release. Is this yeah. resolution going to be published? Yep. This version. I saw the um, that clinic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I reviewed that. I'm missing a resolution on it, so I need to get it here. Okay. Yeah. Stacy's on for 130. It's 115. Um, three of these pages to sign. No matter for me. I'm excited to get started, aren't you? This has been what two or three year dog, three year project. First. Yeah, um, two years of serious work. Um, before that, was kind of more conceptual and idea based. But yeah, it just progressively gets more and more. <laughs> Well, that's a cool building. I'm glad to see that it's going to be coming together. So it's actually built in 1913. Our office building we're in in Wichita was built in 1913. It's and originally a purpose built as a 
essentially a dormitory. Um, we were in the westward expansion area, and she, the, some of the uh, overnight accommodations here had less than selling recommendations at the time. Uh, we catch my drift, so the YMCA built that building as a safe Christian harbor for overnight stays. And then we kind of retrofitted over the years to meet their evolving mission. Uh, so now it's, it's pretty cool that we're going back to the original. Yeah. Was there a daycare in there too? Yeah, they did, or so? they did teen town in the basement, yeah. which I've heard a lot about, where teenagers would come and they do overnight stays and they converted things to gymnastic space and racquetball and swimming pools. And, yeah. Is the swimming pool still in that building? Yeah, it's down there. It's just covered with a hardwood floor. Okay. Yeah, but it's, it's there. We're not, we're not touching it in this project. <laughs> When you said demolition, you meant like interior walls, but you're not going to do the outside. No. Mm. So it's all, all interior. There'll be a couple of stairs that get replaced. Or you go to your, to your parking iron gap to yes. get that block. It's part water. of the acquisition agreement with the YMCA to, to have space behind the building. And we build perpendicular spaces attached to the alley behind. So we'll, we'll meet the, the required parking spaces. You know, I worked on the YMCA deal um, when they when we did the renovation. It was sales tax only. So you have to get back to Wichita by 3 o'clock? No, sir. I'm going to now to Overland Park. Okay. You can get there by 3. And I will get there by 3. <laughs> thank you. And um, I'll be there all day tomorrow. So someday I'll rest. <laughs> yeah, I had, well, I still have, but I still have what you had last week. I'm so I'm sorry. still just about the end of it. You, know. you sound pretty good, so I'm confident. Okay. Yeah, it ain't like you need to stop down there and buy a turkey license and go out and have a couple of shots of turkey and then you'll <laughs> eat a cure or a <laughs> You're not the first person to suggest that. So. <laughs> Okay, so do we want to move on to the maybe patch your updates or? I see Stacy walk by. Oh. What? what? I see Stacy walk by. Try to wake him up and say good, good morning. Lighter down, don't walk out. Yeah, I think they're going to come in with a with the yeah. solid west waist. I mean, enjoy communication. Kelly Kessler, what did you do? Um, we had the uh, confirmation <laughs> hearing on the sheriff sale or the tax sale, the sheriff sale that we had um, yesterday. Um, and the, the court uh, confirmed the sale in all respects. There have been two objections that have been filed. Uh, the court denied one of them and took the other one under advisement uh, and essentially asked the attorneys to present a stipulation of what the facts are uh, and that relates to the issue about uh, uh, whether or not a person that was bidding was authorized under the statute to bid um, the, uh, without getting too far into the, the details of that uh, Confusion was caused by my desire to make the affidavits that the buy purchasers signed shorter, and I left out two words. Uh, that is that people aren't allowed to bid if they have an interest as an owner of the property, and I had just simply put in the affidavit that had an interest in the property, but the buyer was saying they didn't have an interest in the property. Probably more correctly should have said an interest as owner, but. Uh, there, there were a couple other things that we, uh, I say we, me, uh, that I had edited out. So I think maybe the next time you'll see those affidavits, maybe two pages instead of a single page because to get all that in. But, okay, how's uh, that process work now that they've taken it under advisement? Does the judge look at that and then make a decision of whether there's merit? Yes, and he'll, he'll decide that just on that one track. In time frame, I mean, what I would guess within a week. I would guess within a week. Uh, 
it, it is a general uh, long time frame. If he says it's, it has with merit, then is there a hearing on that? Uh, if he doesn't confirm the sale, we'd get some direction from him, but most likely we, we'd have two choices. We could either uh, have another sale, and but that would that would require publishing it again, and, uh, but it would only be for one track. And we we did that in the last one, so we had one track. We lost it published separately for, uh, or putting it in a, a later tax sale. Okay, uh, like the next tax sale. Those yeah. Are, yeah. Uh, we also, this is the first time uh, that we've collected more in court costs. We've collected more in court costs on the properties that were redeemed than we had out of pocket expenses. Um, and so, likely, that will change the formula that we use to determine court costs uh, for future sales. Um, but that's a that's the first time of any of the sales I'm aware of. Where is that something that's prohibited? Uh, um, no, uh, it, it isn't. Um, the court has discretion, though, about uh, how to uh, how to finally assess the costs because he makes a, a preliminary assessment of court costs, and that includes. Um, everything from the filing fee to the publication costs that we incurred, the mailing costs that we had, um, and the abstracting. The abstracting is the biggest uh, the biggest part of it. Uh, but I, I think it's uh, probably attributable to the fact that we uh, had a lot of properties that were still that had not been abandoned uh, that were on the, the sale list. And if uh, I understand our policy of uh, moving forward, our goal is to uh, to be proactive about having the sales and to not let properties get to the point of being abandoned before they're on there. So uh, if that if that continues, then we should be able to have lesser court costs than what we um, what we have traditionally had because we didn't change the formula any. It's just that uh, we have more properties redeemed. And uh, at a higher, the, the costs, the, the taxes that were owed on those properties were higher because they weren't vacant lots. So they had, uh, so there was a higher dollar on, that, on some of those properties. That makes sense. So, uh, I wanted to get some direction. That's all on, on that topic. Uh, I wanted to get some direction. There had been some email discussion about the county covert policy. I emailed that to each of the commissioners. That is the policy that uh, has been adopted about 10 years ago. There's a state statute on culverts and our responsibility regarding them. And in this situation, we're not talking about culverts um, on the roads or under the roads. We're talking about culverts. Uh, for landowner access to their property. Uh, the statute was adopted in, uh, I want to say 1917, but I could be off a few years on that. And it required that any place that the county put a ditch in uh, for the construction of a road, that we had to put in one entry, one access point for the landowner. And that's our that remains our obligation. And property that's subdivided after the initial uh, access is established, it's not our responsibility to provide a culvert for each of those additional places. Uh, although we have frequently done so in the past. Um, and I think mostly because we weren't going to go back and do research about when property was subdivided and we don't have tremendous records as to when each culvert that we have in the ground in our county was put in. Uh, One of the talking points we had this morning was a property that was subdivided and probably the ditches were installed by the developer and not the county. I, I would guess. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Yeah. Well, I, I think it probably does. Uh, it also maybe um, underscores the importance of having 
a planning commission um, because if somebody does build a, put in a subdivision and they dedicated the roads to the county, if the county accepts those roads, and clearly we've accepted people on, on that uh, that area, then we're responsible for the, the road maintenance. And I, I know of a couple of uh, subdivisions where we've done that, and I know of, uh, well, really two, I think, that we haven't done that. Still have uh, gravel roads through the subdivisions that are not maintained by by the county or by a township, uh, to my knowledge. Um, so, are you recommending that we adopt a uh, planning commission? Um, <laughs> you know, that's a that's a bigger discussion, and it, it gets into uh, land land use planning. The county traditionally has not been uh, Involved in much. I understand, uh, but it, it, there are some situations where it could be. It would be to our benefit to have an idea as to what was going on, and to have some say in how land is being. A little background on what happened up in Nemaha County is they did the county was not. Zone. So, <laughs> yeah. And so, let's say um, Mike, farmer Mike, decides he's going to give 10 acres to his children to build a home, which he does. And then along comes the wind farm the wind farm, and they don't have any offset requirements. Um, so they could build a wind farm right next to your your house. But then I think they worked out 3,500 feet, but that's not very far from one of those wind farms. And they would have solved all that by being zoned. And I know that's a nasty word in our county, but if the way things are in the future, it may be worth a discussion at some point. But that zoning would have to have words uh, uh, specifically dictated to the wind farm, a uh, general zoning uh, policy wouldn't catch uh, those. those yeah, I don't know how you build that, and I'm not even sure we should do that. I'm just saying, right, right. we are subject. Mm -hmm. These wind farms can come in and sign people up without any of our knowledge. Yeah. And all of it, and I'm telling you, what happened in Nemaha County for family against family, people not talking to fathers because they they shook the father's farm, he signed the deal, not understanding all the implications. Next thing you know, the kids are going to get a, a wind farm right next to their house. So um, it's caused a lot of, a lot of uh, issues in that regard. I'm not familiar with the Nemaha County, uh, what's happened there, but you know we do get calls when uh, someone, when some company wants to put in a uh, a microwave tower or a, a cell tower uh, about placement of those and there, as you say there are no setback requirements and uh, there are some of those that get put fairly close to property lines um, and we've all the county hasn't been involved in that in the past uh, but I, I know it generates a set of calls for for you when it happens uh, if you wanted to look into having a planning commission, which is not the same thing as having zoning. Um, planning commissions are used with zoning, but they, that's not the only purpose. Um, I could look into that. As to I'd like to understand required. it. I'm not sure it's the right thing for us, but yeah. I think knowledge is a, is a good thing. Yeah. And, and if, with, with the planning commission, I've been impressed with the ones that I've worked with, that you, you do have it's citizen involvement. It's not... Uh, it's not the the commission, and it's not county staff that's uh, that's on it. Typically, it's uh, it's the public, and, and most of the times I've seen it, I've been impressed with the uh, knowledge and the work that citizens are willing to put into uh, to their community. Really, and it's a way for for, sure. for them to do that. So, in uh, the planning commission, of the city of Atchison didn't start till 1964. 
And you can see a difference if you go up to pre-1964 subdivisions. Okay. Are you, Patrick, anything else? Um, not on that topic. We can go back. Okay. Okay, there you are. Come on up. First of all, I'm going to present the uh, proposal from Swab Eaton for signature. It is uh, proposing to do the KDHE mandated design plans for permit 260 and 233, that is the construction demolition landfill and the fire monofill at Effingham. Uh, they have given us until September 1st to get this done, and it is for the amount of $23,000. Any questions to the Page 3, 2A, uh, we briefly talked about this this morning. I would like to see anticipated construction of this concrete and read as following. Uh, hourly rate and the total cost is not to exceed 23000 instead of is not anticipated to exceed 23000 Is there a motion? Or how do we? Well, I think the best way to do it would be to have a motion to adopt, and then during the discussion, an amendment be proposed. And I'm not 100% on Robert's rule or what kind of rules we follow here, but I think that's correct. So the chair would entertain a motion to enter an agreement with Swab Eaton um, Engineering Services, not to exceed, not anticipated to exceed $23,000. I have a motion. I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Further discussion? Yes. Well, this is now where we need to strike. Well, I thought we just voted for the construction took it out. No, he okay. did say, he did say it. If the, the motion was to leave that in. So okay. now we want to well, I, this is what I want to make an amendment to. Yes, I do. I would like to see the word anticipated struck from the contract and read total cost is not to exceed 23000 versus total cost is not anticipated to exceed 23000 So let's vote on the amendment. Uh, was it? Well, I'll I second the motion. amendment. I'll second the amendment. Okay. It's moved and seconded. Assuming you're ready to vote, all those in favor, stand up, all those say aye. 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 I'll oppose same side. Now, do I have a motion? Do I do we need a vote on the actual contract? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same side. I'm going to strike out anticipated because I'm the only one who's going to sign this. I guess. Do you need to make sure that? Or? Well, yeah, I, I think uh, I one of us will need to talk to Swabby to make sure that's uh, agreeable, and we can either. Bring one to have uh, to have you sign after that's modified, or uh, present that one. But it will need to be re-signed by then. Okay. Will you handle that? Yeah, well, I, I'm happy to. Okay. Yeah, will that need? Will they need a copy of the minutes or anything like that? That how that or just the well, they'll need to give their cons they'll need to express their consent to that change, and I'm, I will give them some latitude on how they want to do that. Um, Definitely, they need to be made aware of it before we give the original contract to them. Uh, I'm wanting to make the note in mind. Okay. A copy of it. Now, Stacy and Kim are here to, to uh, get approval for the Solid Waste and Joint Commission Board, which are both uh, funded by the 1% sales tax. And um, we would. Um, they, we, we, we had, we've had discussions here, planning workshops with the county. Their boards and their committees have gone through it and made their recommendations. This was presented to the joint county city meeting on the 29th of May. And last night, the city of Atchison adopted 
these um, these budgets. So the chair will entertain a motion to adopt these budgets. So do I stand? I second. All seconds. This been moved and second. Is there any further discussion? Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> okay. All righty. It just shows you how good it works when we all work together. So, Thank thanks you very for much. Thanks Thank for being such a good part of this. Excuse me, email don't. for Jared. He wasn't on the uh, mm -hmm. I Two point three million from the uh, with, with the use tax also combined. This is what it takes to run. Oh no, I I I run on one six eight eight one six eight eight. So I I understand. Okay. Well, I, I didn't think the numbers made sense that I didn't do. So our, our share would be about eight hundred ten thousand. Yeah, I think that would be and their share between, between the two slightly higher than that. Yeah, just but like we're forty seven point something. So okay. I think we can make a deal. Before I forget it, I'm gonna have to back up to do this. I had two phone calls. One from a Mr. Wentz about a low water crossing bridge down there near the uh, Charlie Service Quarry. Uh, Mark met with Seth and they hauled some rock from the fall of the rains. I think Rick was washed that down. He said they'd like to have some attention. And then I had a gentleman out here around the corner from Mr. Ball. He's been here before about getting that blacktop. He's complaining about the water can't get over to the ditch that was built originally and it's Going down alongside the road and it's going across this driveway to cut the ditch. So when you cross it, you get the ball. Where's that on? Down on Rookwood Road. Is that part of our project list? No. He's been up there until it starts with the P. He's been up here a couple times. Once that black top, you, you'll call him again here. He's been here at least twice. But I told him I'd bring it for the board and I did it. So, yeah. Bill. And since you brought up the subject, and Eric, we went to that nine, and we normally need a ten. Mm -hmm. And really, a couple of people we really didn't have the proper amount of time for it. It's kind of a rush situation. Should we meet at nine, at least for the month of June, as we get through these budgets? Because I'd like to have a conversation next week, you know, maybe last 45 minutes or an hour just for the road and bridge. You know, that's fine with me. I, I mean. And I don't want to have meetings for meetings. We need to have a person, a new person, in place somewhere there. So continue on. These we're things that keep coming up, we need to address as well. Yeah. I'm going to say this, we're this, have to is not, it. this is not a high dollar thing. It just he lives on a corner, and the, and the water can't get in the ditch. But the, what he's complained about, it, here's the ditch. Here's got a tube. Then here's the driveway, and the roads out here, and the water is coming down here. Cutting a ditch and then going over his driveway. So when he drives his driveway, he's got a ditch going across his driveway. That day. But the water can't get over to the main ditch. Has he just talked to the person that's patrolling the road uh, using the that? I, I, don't, I, I don't think know. sometimes people go over the first logical step is to talk to their local maintenance guy and, and uh, stop him or give him a phone call and tell him what they want done. Especially if it's a mowed area, a lot of times patrolmen. Uh, road, running the road patrol, they're very reluctant to get into something that's mowed and kept as a yard because it, 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 it's kind of a yard. And, and, and don't surprise me because that's what it sounds like. And yes. they, they're going to have to be willing to also work with having something tore up or an exposed ditch for a while because the only way they're going to get that corrected uh, is maybe to have a road patrol take some dirt out of it. No, I'm, Commissioner, no, I'm not saying we need to. Jump better. I just told the gentleman that I would bring it for the board. Okay. I, I think that things that come up from citizens we should take very seriously. But did they follow the procedures of contacting Road and Bridge and making the, making the uh, request uh, to them? Probably not. 
So I think that's where we should ask people to start. And if for some reason they're not getting the attention from Road and Bridge and they talk to you, that's a different subject. I think we, we've, I mean, I, I don't know if we have a policy or what it should be. So I think it's probably a situation uh, if he, he knows there's been a replacement, so he wants to get his two cents in. Because I think we've had a couple emails and that one from. Yeah, you know, but I also got one from uh, Kaylee that somebody came into the clerk's office. And, you know, it, these are all get forwarded to Road and Bridge for them, for them to put on their, their calendar. And then the, the new Road and Bridge guy can take those and decide what he wants to do. Or her. I agree. Okay. Um, moving right along. Wes Lanter, emergency emergency director. Sewer discussion disaster. Same question. <clears throat> for two different things. Sewer discussion and <laughs> disaster declaration. No. The sewer not working is also a disaster. It's a pretty big disaster <laughs> right now. So, uh, okay. So, first of all, um, we came and presented to you our sewer has failed. We got, so I'll do the sewer first. <laughs> the sewer system has failed and we've been pumping it. We have prices to hook onto the city sewer. Um, that price is fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars. That will include setting a new tank, <clears throat> um, a grinder pump, and five hundred feet of line to hook into the to the city sewer. Um, and that is from Trotlock Excavating. Does that also include the electrical? Um, so yes, we we placed a. Uh, um, when we're doing our electrical projects, moving or hooking up the secondary building, we place a junction box there so the electrical will feed right into it. And we have everything the city has to do to <coughs> connect. Um, <coughs> Child Off is getting a permit to make that happen, to do the digging and everything, but yes, they've already been out and, and surveyed the site. And so this is a whole deal. That's yeah. a turnkey project. Yeah. Done. Okay. And it takes care of the old septic it's system. To, needs they're to be. going to dig up the old tank, fill it full of rocks. And follow any KE's policy or whatever that is on, to, be to close abated. them. Do the um, laterals need to be abated? I don't know that answer, but I will find out. That's so. as deep as they are. It seems like they're way too deep. I wouldn't think it really cost a problem. I don't need it. <clears throat> but I would check that I will. Okay, so the chair would entertain a motion. To enter in a purchase order for Trot, Trotloff, Trotloff, Trotteroff excavating LLC. Sorry about that, Trotteroff. Um, for fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars to connect to the city sewer. Fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars. Do I have a motion? Also moved. So moved by moved. Do I have a second? I'll second it for discussion purposes. Um, we, have a, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, I sustain for voting because we only had one bid on it, and uh, I would like to see more bids. Anything else, Bill? That's it. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes two to two and one abstention. Okay, then the other thing is um, Commissioner Bauer and myself signed a disaster proclamation effective the 28th of May because of the flooding. I need you three to extend that with this disaster proclamation. That's what you say every 10 days? Uh, just for public days. consumption, why don't you tell them why we do it, why we extend it. Okay, okay, so with the with the river flooding as, as we have now and as we have had for the last week and a half, we're about flood stage, so parts of um, River Road in the county and part of River Road in the city, along with um, farm ground in the southern part of the county and levees that are broke, 
um, is underwater. So we're signing this declaration because the state of Kansas has finally um, been able to hit the threshold and they hit the to where they can get a presidential disaster. Um, so we will hopefully get FEMA to come in and assist us in re rebuilding our roads um, and along with getting assistance to get um, our levees rebuilt that were that are failed. And how far back does that reach? I mean, that only from? goes um, that it will not go through what we had in March, um, but <clears throat> doing the declaration now will help us with what we're damaging now. So um, we'll just have to play by ear with FEMA because they may go back since we did the declaration back then. They may go back that far, but we'll have to play that by ear. I know I had one individual that was quizzing me about uh, road damage, mm -hmm. and I said, "Well, at that time we didn't meet the threshold, so now I don't, you know, I don't know what to say." Uh, is FEMA will bring them back up to where they were. Um, so road damage, um, it'll bring them back up to, it doesn't build a brand new road, it bring, brings it back mm -hmm. up to where it was. So whether it was flooded this spring or not, it's still going to bring their roads back up to where they were before this happened. Okay. So he'll get assistance for the township, all in the township will get assistance, along with the county. The cheerleader came approving proclamation is <clears throat> giving the state of local disaster emergency Rancheson County, Kansas. So I have a motion. I saw that. It's been I'll second. It's been seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I assume you're ready to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Okay, anything else? That's all I got on my schedule for today. Okay. Okay, I guess that will do it. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go back to Pat Henderson. Is there more updates that you had, Pat? Um, thank you, guys. The, the only other thing would be if you wanted to have a an executive session on an attorney client matter involving the uh, topic that we discussed this morning. Okay. Uh, we've got 10 minutes for our next appointment. I feel 10 minutes won't be enough adequate time. Well, we could, you know, so probably, we probably would to decide whether or not you wanted to have a further discussion. Oh, okay. So it probably would be. You've got the temperature. I move that the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 1.48 p.m. for consultation with an attorney for the public body, which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship, as allowed by KSA 754319B2, and that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the confidentiality of the discussion, and that the Board come out of the, of the executive session at uh, 1.59 PM in the commission room, first floor courthouse, and those present would be uh, the three commissioners and Pat Henderson, county counselor. Have a second? I second that. All those in favor, so good for saying aye. 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 There's executive session. Okay. I have no idea. Hey, uh, do you want to redistrict the uh, districts? Um, it sounds like somebody's thinking about something. You you can. Um, we get new census data in two years. Would you want it? We go beforehand, or I mean, I'm just saying. Well, I don't know what they got. What they're thinking about. You, you may. I. Well, when did we do it last? There is a limit on how frequently you can do we it. We had uh, Sid. But it, it's probably. I think it's probably been enough time. I don't recall her last name, but Derek came up with the phone call. Pauline Lee was here at that time and she kind of made a few tweaks and we approved it. That's probably been four years ago. Johnson, December of 16, it looks like. Three years ago. Which has been on for a long time. And Roger, uh, Roger Denton has some really good data 
um, but he gets from the census that and we can tell you in a in a bar how many people live there. So so the thing is, I heard something that sounded like a big was a discussion. So I don't know what that discussion was going on. I I haven't heard any of it. Any real discussion? It must be some discussion because he talked a little bit about it. So I'd say it's probably true. Well, there has been uh, for him in particular, but uh, getting ready for the upcoming census, that there's information that they're requesting from the counties. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Michelle's been involved in that. On the, with the census, getting info and requests for, uh, uh, Roger has. Uh, and the city, the cities are involved in that as well. Okay, do we need to have an executive session? Yeah. Well, you want to count how long? Mm -hmm. I'll move that the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 2.03 p.m. to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-4319B1 and that the purposes of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee and that the Board come out of an executive session at 2.33 p.m. in the commission room for school courthouse and those present will be the three commissioners, Pat Henderson, County Counselor, and Jamie Madison, HR Director. I second that, Mr. Chairman. Close the paper, send your father say aye. 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 Right. Okay. Okay, we're on. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jamie. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, back to our agenda. That's your finished? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. I shall move. I'll second. Move a second. All those in favor, second of father saying aye. 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 Was your suggestion that we be at nine next Tuesday? Uh, Good.